Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name, again, is Jeffrey Davis. I'm the host of Radio Entrepreneurs, and we continue to stream stories every week, every day, of entrepreneurship, leadership, and how people are dealing with the economy. Uh, every week, we like to check in with Mark Furman, director, shareholder at the law firm of Tarlow, Breedhart & Rogers, for a very important legal segment, Entrepreneurship and the Law. Welcome back, Mark. Hi, Jeffrey. Great to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, when I first started my career as a management consultant, I never thought of the law. I've said this to you many times. And now I don't think I go through a meeting where I'm not confronted with legal situations or having to work with attorneys because the law is all over business. Well, that's true, Jeffrey. And, um, you know, people have to be aware of not only what the law is, but also, you know, how it works in practice when disputes arise. And I think if you uh, watch uh, law shows on TV, um, you know, there's a dispute and it seems like in two minutes you're at trial and the case is resolved one way or the other. But in practice, it's quite different. It takes a long time for business disputes to work their way through the court system. And, um, you know, it certainly starts with the contracts uh, that people enter into about how strong or weak their position is. But um, let's say you have a, a, a dispute that has to be resolved in court. So you file an action in court and you may wait years in order to get that case heard um, in court, whether it's in front of a judge or a jury. And I mean years um, because you go through this process to arrive at a trial and the process includes uh, among some of the things that includes is um, defending a motion to dismiss, discovery, producing documents, getting documents from the other side, answering written questions under oath, getting written answers from the other side, disputes about documents, disputes about answers, depositions where people are under oath. There's a... Um, um, and they uh, are asked questions and on and on it goes. And then at the end of that, motions to summary judgment, typically by the defendant trying to avoid a trial, saying they win no matter what based upon the undisputed evidence in the case. And finally, a plaintiff having survived all of that is a trial date scheduled. And... Um, so it may well be years uh, from the time the dispute arises, which is why I'm such a fan of people thinking about, you know, is there an alternative way to resolve it? Settlement, mediation, how about binding arbitration as an option that would be quicker typically? Um, you know, the limitations of how quickly one can get uh, their case heard and decided is it's a real thing. It's it's not only is great financial cost, but it's also there's an emotional cost. There's a distraction from the business because um, business disputes tend to be a focus of the business owner. Um, there can frequently be a lot of emotion because they feel they've been wrong, cheated, defrauded, uh, treated unfairly. But there are real limitations. Uh, you know, the when I went to law school, they said, if you want justice, uh, go to divinity school because what we have is a system that is designed to resolve disputes. That's, and we have a 
a system that's designed to bring about a just result uh, in the event of a of a trial. Um, but it's not quick and it's very expensive. And at the end of a trial, even if you win, there may well be appeals. And so things have a way of, you know, just taking a very long time. I mean, I have a case that's scheduled for trial in 2025 that was actually filed in March of 2015. So it'll be 10 years and a day uh, before the trial. Now that's a unusual length of time, but uh, it makes the point that, you know, these things can take a few years, three years, four years, maybe even five years to reach a result. And criminal cases need to take precedent over civil cases because there's a constitutional right to a speedy trial that defendants have. Um, and so that's, that's another limitation on the system um, that makes it hard. COVID had an impact certainly on pending cases because um, the courts, you know, basically were not able to function for several months. So all those, think of all those cases that were pending when COVID hit, that were scheduled for trial during the time the courts were closed, and they had to be uh, rescheduled, and the courts had to dig out from the backlog caused by COVID. And um, so I'm a fan of a resolution everybody can live with um, that uh, ends the case and allows the business owner to get on with his or her life and not have this be a distraction from, um, you know, the, the business. I mean, business owners make 100 decisions every day. And they make these decisions and they're on to the next important decision. So the idea that something is lingering for years is just not consistent with how business owners are accustomed to um, running their business in the ordinary course. So um, disputes are a business problem like any other business problem, and you have to find the best solution that makes sense, although it may be an imperfect solution. You know, I also, uh, and I think it's inherent in what you're saying, entrepreneurs are used to making decisions quickly. They're used to being in control of their budgets. And when it comes to uh, the legal process, they lose control of time and they can lose control of budgets too. And these things can really affect businesses financially long-term, but also the, and I'll just add a third component, the emotional state of the people in conflict since they feel out of control all the time. Uh, I'm sure a lot of what you do and a lot of what good attorneys do is you're giving therapy to your clients because they just can't deal with this process emotionally. And the longer that's true, and the longer it goes on, Jeffrey, the harder it is to harder it is for people to deal with. It's um, it's inherently an out of control process. You get to control certain things. <clears throat> you get to control decisions that you make. Um, that's that's good, but you don't really get to control decisions the other side makes and you certainly don't get to control the decisions that a judge or a jury make or an appellate court there's very little that's more out of control than when you have finished the trial of a case you've put in the best case you possibly can and then a jury or a judge is just going to decide who wins. Right. And when that decision is made, the that's about as out of control as, as you can be. 
Uh, so do you want to put the hands, the, do you want to put the decision in the hands of people who don't really know you, don't really know your business, they get a little piece, learning a piece of your business and a part of you from the evidence that's allowed in the case. And as I've said many times, Jeffrey, you put the same case in front of different judges, you may get a different result. And, um, and the same is true when those cases end up on appeal, because you may have very different perspectives of different judges on the appellate court. Same thing with juries. You know, everybody brings their life ex experiences to uh, the case and things look differently to different people. Well, it's all very complicated. And I think the best advice is good operating agreements, good partnerships, good deals, and uh, good attorneys as well. Uh, Mark, if somebody's looking to understand this process, maybe control this process a little bit better, how would they find you? Uh, the best way to reach me is by email m Furman, F U R M A N, at T B H R L A W dot com. Great. Remind everybody you will see Mark every week on Radio Entrepreneurs.